to get it going. They, they, they tested it this morning, actually, you know. Right, okay. No, it's going. Okay, thank you. So it, it seems that technology is beating me. So actually what happens is that you do attend conferences, you do attend meetings, you, would, you may visit an institution, you may find yourself attached to an organization that is not yours for a couple of weeks or months. And the idea is that what is happening is that you have to be able to travel. And one important thing in traveling is that apart from having foreign exchange, is something I call the fifth limb. You must have your mobile device. And the reason for having your mobile device is because you need to make contact, not with the people that you're around you, because uh, as you can see here, most everybody is not even concentrating with the people around them, but they're making contacts with the people who they may have left behind or they're going to meet. And the idea of having that connection is really supported by a whole process of networking. And I'm here this morning, I am the head of the Trinidad and Tobago Research and Education Network, which you will hear more about, hopefully, as we go along in the course of our public awareness of, of the network. But the idea is that when an educator is roaming, he must or she must have access to data plans or data communication. If your institutions cannot afford to provide you with roaming accounts, it means that you have to dip into your pockets to get a data plan or to get some sort of ability to, to get internet access, or hopefully the institution that you're going to has some sort of guest facility that allows you to log in, to check your emails, to correspond. So what happened in 2002 is that the trans European Research and Education Network, or TERRENA for short, decided that it had already laid the foundation for connecting institutions, connecting research and education institutions, universities, colleges, research organizations. They are already connected in Europe. And they said, what about having a value-added service which would allow your researchers to roam free of charge? So it means, therefore, that you no longer have to think about buying a data plan when you're roaming between education institutions. And this is the service that we are rolling out here today. It's called EduRoam. And the word is just a mashup of two words, education and roaming. So it means that if you are part of an institution that has the EduRoam service, you can roam across the world wherever the service is available. So, in 2004, I believe, the Australians were able to enter the EduRoam fraternity. So this was just across Europe. In 2004, the, the Australians joined. Later, the Canadians joined. And the story has it that the Americans were not part of EduRoam, but one day they decided to go to a conference in Europe. And while they were there, everybody else had access to EduRoam and they were using the facility, and they actually, the Americans, were left behind in this whole process. So as soon as they got back home, they said, we have to have the service available for all our researchers and educators across the United States, and EduRoam became available in the US. Unfortunately for us, because we have a University of the West Indies who was connected to Internet2, which is the research and education network for the Americas, they were able to have EduRoam service before now. But because we now have what we call a research and education network, which connects the universities and colleges in our country, we applied to the, go the Global EduRoam Governance Co Committee to have the status as a national roaming operator for Trinidad and Tobago. So now we are able to roll out to the University of Trinidad and Tobago, the University of the Southern Caribbean, to the ministry, and hopefully soon to that the service where educators can leave their, their country, go to another country which has a university organization that has EduRoam, and automatically have access to the Wi-Fi.
Importantly, too, is that this shows the coverage of the world map with respect to areas where there is an Edroam service. And you'll note, although it's a bit blurred, Trinidad and Tobago is already on the map. I was supposed to use a pointer. So we are recognized worldwide as having an Edroam service, which means that anyone who's visiting from other countries can join the, the Wi-Fi service of an institution. This is just a, a graphic of our Edurom site. So it's edurom.tt, and it gives visitors an idea of where Edurom access can be available in Trinidad and Tobago. And I believe the University of Trinidad and Tobago has Edurom across its 15 sites. So it means that if you are a staff member or a student of another university, say UE, and you go to the Tamina campus or the Omera campus, you will access their Wi-Fi facilities automatically. We asked the University of the West Indies to just give us an idea of who was roaming on their campus last week. And you see that there are people from the UK, from, from I believe Canada, from other countries who are already roaming on the campus of the University of, Trent of West Indies. And more importantly, we asked one of the, the roamers what they thought about the service. So this Roma is from the University of Southampton in the UK. Wow. Sorry. And the phone automatically connected. So it means that that person did not even have to go into their phone and check for that connection. It automatically connects once you are in an edge room space. And the girl said the access was, was good. Three out of, 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 of a rating of four. So it means, therefore, that this service is seamless and it doesn't require you having any technical ability to get onto the Wi-Fi access of EduRoom. This is just a graphic of the global research and education network that allows EduRoom to take place. It connects all of the countries of the world, and you can see it's connecting Trinidad through the CaribNet which is a regional network for Trinidad and Tobago. And through Cabinet, it connects the Trinidad and Tobago Research and Education Network. And this is why we are able to do Ed Room. So before we go, I just ask someone to just do a small video on Ed Room, please. Once upon a time, visiting another campus and getting wireless network <gasps> access was a bit like trying to nail jelly to a tree. Actually, it was possibly easier to do the jelly thing. There were the usual issues, ID, configuring and reconfiguring, totally prehistoric. So it was pretty obvious the whole wireless access thing had to change, big time. And it did, with EduRoam. It's a secure wireless access service that's truly awesome, because wherever you roam, you remain you. Just open your laptop and your username and password, checked at your home campus network, gets you accepted and able to use wireless access at any EduRoam participating institution with internet access available. But protected stuff requires a further sign-on process. Awesome. EduRoam just keeps getting better and its future is all about mobility. Integrated with the latest in mobile technology, EduRoam is set to bring on a whole bunch of super new stuff accessible from a variety of pretty cool places. You'll be able to read emails, watch videos, catch up on study, on the move, and across many locations. And you'll only need one sign-on for seamless wireless access available from a number of participating education and research networks, as well as access to hundreds and growing wireless hotspot sites globally. EduRoam, wireless access you should mess with, seriously. Speak to your research or education institution today about making use of EduRoam services. So therefore, it is something that is widely available, and I hope that you, are, you approach your own institutions to find out about EduRoam at your institutions and become roamers and be able to connect as you travel. Thank you very much. That is very good to know. I'll just ask one thing. Is there anything we have to load onto our mobile devices? 
Nothing at all. Okay. I know we don't have to be technical, but I thought we might have to have something. Okay. Without further ado, let me present Professor Kulwant Singh. And Professor Singh will take his time and do his allotted presentation. Uh, we will be breaking at one. A little bit late, but I'm sure we will so enjoy the presentation that it will, we will not feel it. <laughs> Professor Singh. <laughs> President Naren Singh, uh, Provost Ali, I believe you're here, uh, distinguished guests, hello, welcome. Um, if you don't mind, before I start, I, I want to acknowledge an alumni from NUS. Remarkably, one of our alumni has moved to Trinidad and lives here. So, Jina Hadi, um, what, how, you know, how wonderful it was to meet our graduate here. <coughs> now, uh, I was here in 2001. It seems a long time ago, but I'm really pleased to be back and really pleased to see the progress that has been made. Uh, it's quite remarkable the changes that have taken place in this short period of time. And the world has also changed significantly over these last 14 years. Uh, in uh, 2001, there had just been that major attack in New York. Uh, Afghanistan was at war, the Middle East was a mess. Uh, the world economy was trying to recover from a crisis. Uh, FIFA was in the news because the Under-18 World Cup was being played here. And, uh, and the Aussie team was dominant and not very popular in cricket. Uh, the world has changed so much uh, that now we've just experienced a major attack on a city in the West, uh, the Charlie Hebdo attacks in Paris. There's a war in Afghanistan, the Middle East is a mess. The world economy is trying to recover from a crisis. FIFA is in the news. Um, and the Aussie team is still dominant and just dis as dislikable. <laughs> right. So it's changed a lot and yet it's, things are the same. How do you run a business under such conditions? Right? Do you just adapt to every crisis? Do you modify how you work? Do you fix a, a strategy and just push on regardless of anything? Uh, I'm going to talk about strategy, firm level strategy. Uh, that's what I've been asked to speak about. And uh, what I'll try and do is, what I'll try and do is just introduce two simple frameworks that help us think about how we can implement strategy and how we can, sorry, how we can develop and implement it. And, and of course, generally talk about the Singapore experience. Now, I think Singapore is one of the most uh, organized, systematic, pre-planned, uh, strategic places there are. There is anywhere. Everything we do is non-spontaneous. It's all organized. In fact, some years ago, the government said we should bring more spontaneous fun into Singapore. And what we're going to do is organize a, a fun festival in about six months' time, and we're going to ask the Singapore Army to organize it. <laughs> if that's the idea of fun, right, we organize everything. So the, a key aspect of Singapore is strategy. Everything is planned, executed, right? And that's a, a lesson to learn. Now, I'm going to take some liberties with what we mean by the Singapore